And then the, the weight classes were different. <laughs> Mary tries to slide in with a Yoku Stemi Maza, maybe. I mentioned earlier in the day that when they had the send-off ceremony for the Japanese team they had a speech by a fourth grade girl that was incredibly moving and she started out by saying that in recent years the image of judo in Japan has not been very good and she put it upon the Japanese athletes to return Japan and judo to its glory through their performance in this world championships I think they've met that goal see here. We've got just the penalty for one for Murray, one for Haga. Oh, and there's a big Uchimato attempt right there. Oh, and, the uh, oh. Gotta be careful, Murray. Looking here for <laughs> Osai Komi. Wow, well, look at this. Well, he's definitely got the sleeve wrapped up. That's why he's turned him a, a, a couple of times. <laughs> I see what you're saying earlier about it. Looks like Haga cut himself shaving. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just got the band aid. Just got the band aid. It's in a sort of skin, flesh color things there. Yeah. Rather like the flesh color one on the right eye of Dimitri Peters. He's picked up a bit of a bruise there. See, I don't think that Marais is going to run out of steam as Grohl did. You know, they're two physically strong fighters. They've got the kind of body shape and everything that's just perfect for this weight category. But the difference is, is that Marais can go the full distance so he's going he's gonna to stay dangerous. That's a little bit untidy from Mare. Well, let's just see if Haga can keep up with Mare in this case. Well, he may have to go a, a, another minute over and above what he went with Grohl because at three minutes, Grohl was spent. Mare is going to go a little bit longer, I think. That was Murray's attempt there at Uchimata. Not quite as crisp as Haga's. And Murray turns in, and Haga looks like he was looking for a false attack. Well, we saw Ortiz get caught for the false attack earlier on, where, where she lost contact with the hands. Very similar there, but it was Haga who was given the passivity penalty. Maybe he's just trying to wait him out. And when he feels that Mare is sufficiently weakened, he'll come in with his biggest effort. That could be a big mistake. <laughs> well, it's one tactic. I don't think that Sarah Mare is going to lose in a war of attrition. And he's making the attacks now when Haga is just holding on.
Oh, and that looked a good chance for a counter right there. Just 30 seconds left. And now Haga's going a little harder. And there and it is. Gets it for Yuko. He pulls Murray back into Tatami working on Newaza. But that could not have been timed better. And he can burn off another penalty here. There, there was a point. Yeah. Look at the smile. Yeah. There was a point at which something, somewhere, somebody was saying, you have to step up a gear now. You have to step it up. And he did. And he had enough to come up with a big, strong, a big, strong attack. And it was good enough to catch Mare for Yuko. I don't think he was waiting him out. What I think was happening was he just didn't have the opening, you know? And as much as he tested the, the water, it just, it just wasn't there. You know, he would have liked to have finished it earlier. But when the time came, there was enough in Hagger and not enough from Mare to hold the Japanese off. And it's Hagger. Ryonosuke of Japan, who goes through to the final. David McFall. A little news from Matt, too. We have one less world champion. Kapelik falls to Frey. Well, you said yesterday that your thinking was that, w that there would be one, there would be one person to leave with the red back, back patch intact. That was Teddy Rinner. He is the only one remaining. Incredible, isn't it? There's the score from Haga. And the Frey Haga final looks like an interesting matchup. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that one. Well, before we get that far, we've still got the small matter of the repechage contests and semi-finals.